This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, March the 9th, 2019. Today is the feast day of St. Francis of Rome, born 1384 near the up-and-coming Piazza Navona in the eternal city of Rome. She was super rich and connected, and at the age of 12, despite making it clear to her parents that she wanted to be a nun, she was married against her will to Lorenzo Ponziani another super rich and well-connected Roman youth and commander of the papal troops of Rome. Remember at this time, the Pope was king of a large part of central Italy and was as busy running a nation and fighting wars as he was writing theology and giving sermons. Lorenzo and Francis were happily married for 40 years despite their inauspicious wedding day. In part, that's because Francis was a woman of heroic virtue. In part, it was because Lorenzo was off at battle most of the time. With her free time and tons of cash, Francis went to the poor of Rome and she recruited other wealthy women with free time, the predecessors of today's stay-at-home moms, to go with her into the slums. When crises struck Rome, she converted her estates into hospitals and generally saw in all of her circumstances opportunities to serve the Lord. She's an ideal saint for us today. She was married, somewhat happily. She faced her frustrations and didn't get to live out her dreams as she might have wanted. She took what she had and she placed it in the service of the Lord and the poor, and she helped others to do the same. She went on to found religious houses and orders, but she always remained a holy wife and a good woman. She died today in 1440. St. Francis of Rome, pray for us. Today is the birthday in 1568 of St. Aloysius Gonzaga. He too was a rich Roman youth. He too was well connected. But unlike Francis of Rome, he was permitted by his parents to enter religious life. And unlike Francis, he didn't lead a long and holy life. Quite the contrary. He was a Jesuit novice when a plague broke out in in the city. He asked for permission to care for the dying. And knowing the risks, he went into the Roman ghettos and he died of the plague just a few days before his 23rd birthday. He died in 1591 and was beatified only 14 years later. He was canonized by Pope Benedict XIII in 1726. Today he's the patron of seminarians, young men, and medical workers. Finally today in 1959 at the American Toy Fair in New York City, Barbie made her debut. She was designed by Ruth Handler for Mattel and was based on a German concept called Bild Lily. She was meant to take advantage of the burgeoning fashion industry in the United States at the time. And the doll was meant to be dressed up in dozens of outfits, each sold separately, and to encourage young girls to become interested in fashion design and couture fashion in general. Before Barbie, many young girls played with paper dolls drawing and coloring their own clothes and then sticking them to the paper cutout. It was watching her daughter play this way that inspired Ruth Handler to pitch the idea in the first place. Barbie grew faster than anyone could have predicted and spawned an entire Barbie universe, complete with a series of friends, a boyfriend, a series of dollhouses and vehicles, and some controversy to boot. Barbie's measurements, after all, are fairly unrealistic for human females, and more than a few girls have hurt themselves trying to look like their Barbie dolls. For better or worse, though, Barbie is bigger than Mattel could have ever imagined. She's a genuine cultural phenomenon, and today is kind of like her birthday. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.